didn't know that I could actually record my screen um, on my Mac. Uh, this is a function that I had just found out recently where it is as simple as going to your keyboard. If you have a MacBook or any Mac for that matter, that you can just click uh, or press Shift Command 5 right here and you can start recording your screen. And uh, I always thought that screen recording was just dependent on using a third party app that you download off the web and you use that to record your screen and your voice and all that stuff. But, you know, if I were to just click this um, and it's still recording right now, Shift Command 5 gives me that option to, you know, uh, either to capture the entire screen, you know, oh, well, this is the capture is more for pictures. But um, right now it's still recording. But if it wasn't recording, it would actually show more boxes right here that'll give you the record option that will record the entire screen. And the options would actually give you the microphone option as to what you would want to select as well. And that's this is something that I just find really, really cool. Um, you know, I've had this Mac for seven years, and one of my greatest regrets is not being able to use this Mac to its fullest potential. Um, and, you know, as I'm looking at this, I mean, look at my, de this is my desktop right here. And my goodness, look at the color scheme. It's just gorgeous. You know, seven years on, and I find that Apple is still innovating. They're still inventing. They're still moving forward with their technological projects to make things more, you know, more user-friendly and way more advanced. Um, and, you know, just for like average users like myself, um, you know, this is uh, right here, for example, this is the Finder. The Finder is basically your Mac's central hub. It contains all your folders. It's your entire computers in here. Without Finder, you don't have a Mac. There's no way to actually quit the Finder, too. You're not allowed to exit from it because if there was an option to exit from it, hypothetically speaking, you would have no Mac. Your Mac is gone. Um, so they, it's designed in a way that, you know, you're not allowed to, to lose it. And I've just, you know, down here, here's all these, uh, you know, this is what we call the dock, where it docks all your apps, you know, the ones that you find important. Um, one of the things that I find very cool, for example, is to add apps to the dock or to remove them, right? So I'll give you a show here. I'll show something right here. Imagine I find, let's say, for example, I don't know, the FaceTime app. Even though I know that this is part of Apple, I'm just using this as an example. I never really use it, right? Um, and, you know, let's say I want to remove it from the dock, maybe to make space for something that I do find more important. I could just click and drag and then as I drag up you see that remove right there let go and it's gone you know it doesn't actually drag up to the desktop rather it just removes it now that doesn't mean that you've deleted it off your computer um, because you still have what we call the launch pad which contains all your apps right here right so you know you're looking right here see FaceTime is still here this would be the launch pad you know that contains pretty much all your apps and you know, you can swipe and it's pretty much designed like the iPhone or the iPad where you can swipe and you see all your apps right here. And it gives that beautiful, seamless experience. It looks very easy. Um, another way to open Launchpad is to actually use four fingers on the trackpad if you have a MacBook um, or, you know, if even if you have an iMac, the big one and you bought a trackpad with it, you use four fingers, make the close motion and then you just open it like that. It's, it's gorgeous. Um, so, you know, I've always found Max to be just, uh, you know, very, very beautiful. They give such a seamless, easy experience uh, for users. And, you know, one of the things that I actually uh, like doing is, you know, going on to apple.com uh, or CA. If, you, if you're American, go to .com. I just do apple.ca because I'm Canadian. And I like looking at the current Macs that we, you know, that we have right now. And I usually do this for amusement. What I do is I would, um, you know, and, and before I, I talk about that, look at all these different options, right? You have the MacBook Air, you have the MacBook Pro, MacBook Pro 16, 
iMac 24 inch, 27 inch, the Mac Pro, which is like the most powerful Mac out there, the Mac Mini. Mac Mini is like basically if you already have a display and you just want to plug it into the Mac Mini. This would already contain your hard drive, memory, everything. This is your computer right here. And it's a very small, very, very small portable device um, that you just plug into a monitor, kind of like the Pro Display XDR, and you already have a computer working. So um, what I like to do, so this is where I'm getting to, I like to custom build these Macs and get them to the most powerful point, to the most, uh, you know, if it's so powerful and so um, quick in terms of its processing and in terms of its storage, how much would it cost, right? So, you know, let's say I click MacBook 13, uh, Pro 13, and the MacBook Pro is actually what I have right now, and this is what I'm currently recording uh, my screen on, uh, except it's seven, almost seven years old, and uh, it's about to be obsolete, which Makes me a bit sad because Mac OS Monterey is coming out, which is the newer operating system. Uh, and I can no longer upgrade to it because my thing is pretty, uh, my, my Mac is pretty obsolete at this point. So in this MacBook Pro, as I'm looking right here, right, it's like, you know, the base, the base is like, you know, $16.99. Uh, I mean, look at this. This is gorgeous. It's beautiful, right? If I were to go to buy... And I just click buy right here. And let's say, you know, for, um, you know, this MacBook Pro, right? They give two options. They have the 13 inch, the 16 inch. And let's say, for example, I want to go for, let's say I want something more portable. So I go for the 13 inch. Um, but I want something that has more storage than, you know, 256 gigs, right? So, and that would cost like, you know, $16.99, uh, you know, plus tax. Um, let's say I go for the higher one, right? Which has 512 storage. And let's say I want to pick silver as the color, right? I think silver and, you know, silver and space gray, pretty similar. It's just one is lighter. If I select this, right, I can begin to custom build this Mac and get it up to, you know, its most powerful point. So right now at its base, it's two gigahertz. Let's say I want to like get it up to 2.3, right? So 0.3 higher, quad core, 10, 10th generation Intel Core i7 processor. And you can boost it up to 4.1 gigahertz, um, you know, if you want to process more stuff at a faster rate. Um, and memory, 32 gigs of RAM for just 500 bucks more. And, uh, you know... I've never seen a laptop before go up to 32 gigs. I mean, the most that I've seen would probably go up to 16 gigs. The one that I currently have right now is eight. Um, and four terabytes of solid state drive storage, SSD, which means that the drive is technically a flash drive and it has no spinning disk, which makes it run even faster than you know your traditional hard drive. Um, but I know that Macs right now have the Fusion Drive. They, um, Apple invented the Fusion Drive, which is a combination of the traditional drive and the flash drive, the SSD drive, to balance out speed, capacity, and, you know, and to make it faster, but also more, um, you know, uh, balanced in terms of storage, right? So there's more storage. And, uh, you know, let's say I want to add my Final Cut Pro because I'm a video editor or Logic, because I like to produce music. This comes up to $5,328.98. Like, that's insane. I, and Macs are very pricey. You know, they are very, very, you know, pricey, but you get what you pay for, right? I've had my MacBook Pro for seven years. It still works like a charm. It's beautiful. It is a bit slower now because... I had just recently upgraded it to, um, right here, it's called Big Sur, Mac OS Big Sur. It's the latest OS that we have right now, the operating system. Um, but, of course, because I've had it for seven years, from what I understand, Apple uh, considers seven years or more, your product would be obsolete, so it can no longer be updated, which kind of makes me sad because when I saw uh, at WWDC, the worldwide that worldwide conference, where Apple was coming out, was um, doing the promotions 
for the many new things that are coming out in this fall, uh, whether it's software or for iPads or iPhones, iOS, iPad OS. Um, you know, they came out with Mac OS Monterey, which is Mac OS number 12, version 12. And I can't upgrade to that. But I saw, you know, I watched a video of it, of Craig Federighi doing his presentation of the Mac OS Monterey. And, oh, I just died a little bit because it was just so beautiful. Um, and just like even better functions than before and even much more seamless experience for average users. Um, and you know, I've always found Macs to be just great, especially for people like artists. Um, you know, people who want to produce music, people who want to create videos, want to create documentaries. The Mac is the way to go. Um, but here's an even funnier one. Um, so I did the Mac Pro. I, I remember I did the custom build for the Mac Pro, right? So I'm going to take you guys here to the Mac Pro. And this is what's just insane. And, and this looks like, um, and we call this the cheese grater, the cheese grater Mac, because, well, look at it. It's designed like a cheese grater. And just look at this. Being pulled up, um, you know, they pulled the case, the case lit up. And just look at the inside. It's so clean. It's so beautifully designed. It just, I don't know. I've I've seen computers in the past and the interiors of computers in the past, but this is just something else. Um, it's just beautiful. And I believe that those three things right here, those are the fans. Um, you know, the three fans that this Mac Pro is running. And yeah, they call it the cheese grater because look at this, you know. You can, um, I've had fantasies about this where, uh, you know, if I ever get hungry for cheese, uh, I, I would probably, you know, take a piece of cheese and grind the cheese on it just to make slices for myself. And then I can make, uh, you know, mac and cheese. Ha ha. <laughs> I know that was a really cheesy joke, but anyways, um, <laughs> God, I'm such a dork, but, um, <laughs> If I click buy, right, and I remember just maxing this thing out, right? So, you know, there's like two kinds of Macs. There's like the Mac Pro rack, and then there's like this Mac Pro tower right here, which is at least $7,499, right? But I wanted to go for the big boy. I wanted to go for the powerful one. So I clicked configure, and I started to just max this thing out like insane, right? So you look at this, at its base, 3.5 gigahertz, eight cores, Intel Xeon, W processor, and you could turbo boost this up to four gigahertz, right? But that's not good enough for me. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to go for 28 cores, 2.5 gigahertz, Intel Xeon, W processor. Turbo boosted up to 4.4 gigahertz. So imagine 4.4 times 28 cores, right? And so imagine the cores. What are the cores, right? I'll, I'll use this analogy. It's like, imagine a kitchen, right? And each core is like a chef, right? Processing, cooking, doing stuff, right? This kitchen has 28 cores or 28 chefs working. And especially at speeds of... 2.5 gigahertz, right? So these chefs are probably, um, what do you call it? Like, um, they're probably terminators or something. You know, they're really fast cookers, right? Add $8,750, right? Just for that. Memory at its base, 32 gigs, right? So 32 gigs of RAM um, in order to run your programs, right? And the more RAM you have, the more programs you can run in the background this can get up to 1.5 um you know 1.5 uh terabytes but i can't select this option because it says 24 core uh option requires 28 core processor did i select this oh i didn't select it right that's why so i select that so i add 8700 i think that's what that was the price 1.5 terabytes of memory. That's 31 grand. Over 31 grand. So I'm going to add that to the system. And then I'm going to go for the 2 times 32 gigs of video card. 
graphics, right? In order to, I don't know, am I a movie producer? I, I don't know. I'm just going to like max this out. Get up to eight terabytes of SSD storage. I was actually expecting 20 considering that, you know, um, this Mac is huge and I thought that it could fit probably 20 terabytes, but whatever, this is what they could work with. And I also know that with SSD drives, solid state drives and their flash drives, um, they're quite limited when it comes to storage because, um, you know, it's kind of like you're trading storage for speed basically with an SSD drive, but eight terabytes is a lot. That's 8,000 gigs. Um, so and then let's say here, afterburn card. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but I'm just going to try to max that out. I'm going to get the most expensive Magic Mouse and Magic Trackpad 2. And then let's say I add Final Cut, right? And I add Logic Pro. This thing comes up to $68,000 and 200, wait, $68,237.98. What? That's insane. But... You know, I guess, like, you know, maybe for this, this is, like, for maybe, like, what, Hollywood producers? I mean, for them, this is pocket change, right? They make a whole bunch of movies and make millions of dollars. This is pocket ch- a pocket change to them. And maybe, like, you know, to each his own, right? If this is, like, a person who's processing documentaries, processing movies, creating, you know, their own films or audio, music, whatever it is, and, you know, they're running soundboards, all that kind of stuff this would be the machine to go, you know, like if you're like a professional producer, this is insane. 68 grand. I could buy a car with that and probably a Volvo or maybe like some Tesla or something. Um, or the cheaper version of a a Tesla model three, something like that. But either way, you know, this is if you really, really want to do heavy lifting with your programs. If you're trying to run, um, you know, probably like, like, like graphic design at like a very, very high rate. You would want a very fast processor because you want like the data speed process. You want to process the data quickly, right? Um, and you also want a great deal of RAM because you want to, you know, run multiple media programs in the background, editing softwares in the background, you know? So, that's insane. 68 grand. And that's, you know, what what can I say about that? But you know what? I'm still tempted. If I had 68 grand, you know, there is a part of me that would be like, would I buy a car or would I buy this Mac? <laughs> and I guess you can tell by the sound of my voice, I have a great deal of love for Macintosh. Look at this. It's just beautiful. It works so seamlessly. And, uh, you know, I just wish that, um, you know, other people can get on it. And, you know, a lot of people will have their debates about Windows versus Mac. Some people like their Windows because they're more data and technologically advanced, uh, you know, data oriented. Um, They know how to really work in a technical sense. But then, you know, for the average user or maybe even for the artist, The Mac is the way to go because it just gives that really easy and seamless experience to create their art. So this is my screen test video. Um, You know, I just found this out. I wish I I wished I knew how to use my Mac to the fullest potential. And I'm and I'm only learning this now seven years later after buying this Mac. But, you know, Steve Jobs was an, you know, was the innovator. And, you know, despite the fact that he died in the year of 2011 and it was a really sad time for Apple but Apple didn't stop innovating and they're still a technological um, you know they're still a leader when it comes to innovation and technology so I just find this to be wonderful